Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. What I'm going to do in this video is build the case that we are in a climate change emergency. So I'm going to show, build the scientific case showing how our climate system is changing in 2016 and why scientifically we're in a climate change emergency. We have to declare this politically on a global basis. And then we ha how do we deal with this problem? We need to deploy the three-legged bar stool survival techniques as soon as possible on an emergency basis. And first what I'll do is build the case for the emergency, and then I'll discuss briefly some of the possible things that we must do. So, our fossil fuel combustion has increased. We've also increased the land use changes, less forests, more urban, and urban areas and agriculture. So our greenhouse gas levels are rising quickly at an ever increasing rate, at an exponential rate. The earth is rapidly warming. Therefore, we're getting a rapid decline in Arctic sea ice and snow cover, and we're getting faster Greenland ice cap melting. So the Arctic surfaces, in the entire Arctic region are becoming darker. They're absorbing more sunlight. This is causing the northern regions to warm faster than the global average by five to eight times. This decreases the equator to Arctic temperature difference. Less heat moves from the equator to the pole in the atmosphere and in the oceans. Two thirds goes in the atmosphere, one third in the oceans. In the atmosphere, the jet streams are slowing, becoming wavier and often stuck causing extreme weather events to be more frequent, stronger, to last longer, and to occur where they never used to. In the oceans, we're getting warming and thus stratification and acidification that's killing off marine life throughout the food chain, starting at the base of the food chain. It's reducing oxygenation and vertical mixing in the ocean. Currents such as the Gulf Stream are slowing down we're getting large sea level rise also that is starting to flood coastlines. The climate system of the Earth is many different components. We have our hydrosphere, our lithosphere, we have the human influences, we're part of the biosphere, humans are part of the biosphere, we have the, the atmosphere of course, and we have the cryosphere, the ice sheets and so on. So we have these five main components. We have the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. We have solar input coming into the system. If one thing changes, then it, has, it ripples through and changes other, other things. We need to consider the Earth as a climate system and look at how the different components are changing. I did a number of videos just a few days ago. Even in a few days, things have worsened significantly. So the overall Arctic region is 7.23 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. This is the anomaly. Most of the heat is in the Arctic, although we're also getting massive heat anomalies, temperature anomalies, up to 20 degrees Celsius in the Arctic and 10 to 15 in North America. The only cold spot is in Siberia, and that is tending to, that is being dissipated. So the whole climate system is messed up. There's no other way of putting it. It's really acting strangely. What is happening is there's an equalization of temperature with latitude. The, the high latitudes are warming so much, we're getting an equalization of temperature, which changes the weather patterns and the climate on the entire planet. This is another view. Um, and you can clearly see the Siberian cold spot here, the very warm spots in the Arctic and over eastern North America, and we have colder regions in western North America. So we're getting a breakup of stable climate patterns with latitude around the globe. We're getting this blah, patchy sort of areas where we have warm areas and cold areas and warm areas and cold areas. And those areas, because there's large temperature differences over small 
distances, for example, here to here, then this causes very high winds and uh, lots of storm activity. Look at the oceans. The oceans are reflecting what the atmosphere is doing. North Atlantic, all of these regions are warmer than normal. The Arctic is very warm, especially in the North Atlantic and also on the Pacific and the Bering Strait side. And we, recently we had a very, very cold spot south of Greenland. Now we have this very, very cold spot um, in the North Pacific. So we're getting very unusual behavior in the atmosphere and in the oceans because the heat transfer processes of heat from the equator to the Arctic are completely changing. So the, 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 the greenhouse gases, methane and CO2, are the most important ones that are rapidly increasing. Water is also increasing, water vapor rapidly. It's a feedback to the climate system. But we're off the charts. If we go back almost a million years, we're off the charts with these two greenhouse gases. And I pointed out, and I'll point out, I'll reiterate the importance of this. This is very important that the CO2 this year is expected to rise about four, between four and five parts per million off of the chart. So the CO2 is rising rapidly. The methane is rising extremely rapidly, mostly in the Arctic, and I'll discuss that further. Nitrous oxide also increasing rapidly. This is the rates of change each year, and this is the overall cumulative increase. The, the worrying thing is here is atmospheric rise is expected to be between 4 and 5 ppm this year, but CO2 emissions from humans is expected to be similar to last year, which was similar to the previous year, few years. So the last four years it's flattened out, but this is very bad news if this data is correct. It's very, I mean, it's great that the planet is coming together and cutting emissions, but it's very bad news that the atmospheric levels are still rising so fast. This seems to indicate that the global sinks are likely failing. And the biggest global sinks would be the Amazon rainforest. Uh, we're, we're losing a lot of the forest due to drought and fires. We're losing a lot of the boreal forest due to fires. There's over 100 million trees, I believe, that have been dying across North America due to pests and drought and like so water stress, very high temperatures. The ocean is stratifying and warming, so it's not absorbing as much CO2. There's not as much vertical mixing, so there's less CO2 going physically dissolving into the water at higher temperatures. There's also less phytoplankton growing because there's less vertical mixing, so we're getting all of these cascading feedback effects that are becoming extremely serious and cannot be ignored. So the mean surface temperatures are skyrocketing in 2016. They're going off the charts. If this isn't a climate emergency, I don't know what is. If this doesn't move people to action, I don't know what will. This is February of this year. The numbers I've corrected were basically 1.95 degrees Celsius, so almost two degrees above the pre-industrial levels in terms of temperature, the pre-industrial being 1750. So February off the charts, March off the charts. This is completely just devastating the Arctic sea ice and snow cover. These are the IPCC models, the mean and the spread of the models, and this is what the observations are showing. So let's have a look, more deep, look in more detail at what the sea ice is doing. So this is, data is updated as, as a very recently, and we're seeing an exponential decline. If these are different types of fits. These are the exponential fits. So we go to zero around 20, just after 2020, say 2022 or so according to this data. It's not just September, which is the, the minimum is being reduced. This is September, then October and uh, August are bracketing it. 
and then the next two months are bracketing it and so on. Every month is coming down and what we're seeing right now in, in October and November of 2016 is those particular curves for those particular months are converging, are dropping downwards even faster than the September minimum is dropping. So we're always discovering new uh, phenomena occurring in climate change. We're just seeing it happening real time. This is the Arctic sea ice extent. A couple of days in the video, I, the curve looks quite different. If you compare this uh, curve now, we've actually seen a flattening off. We've actually seen sea ice extent dropping. 50,000, 50K uh, on one day, and I think up, up 146K or something on another day, which is, we just haven't seen this before. The, the sea ice tries to grow and extend out and it's being chopped off by wave action by very warm water temperatures and also by the blowtorch like temperatures that are coming into the Arctic and the huge Arctic wide temperature anomalies of 20 degrees C or 36 Fahrenheit above normal for this time of year. So this is the temperature of the Arctic region north of 80 degrees. And this curve is even worse than from a few days ago. Look at the spike up here. Like this is just incredibly, this is unbelievable. This is unheard of. So this temperature um, for this year compared to the long-term average is about 20 degrees Celsius above average. It's essentially summer in the Arctic right now in November. This should be headline news around the world. It's starting to make some mainstream um, newspapers and, and articles online, but they, they're, they're just, they just don't get it. They just don't get that their lives and their children's lives and, and any future for humans on this planet are, are uh, being threatened by what, by what we're seeing here. We're going into very unknown sort of territory where the, our food supply is going to be severely stressed. I mean, this is just, this just blows me away. It blows Climate, any climatologists away should blow everybody away. It will soon. Antarctica, the drop below the long-term average and the variation is accelerating. We're many, many standard deviations below and we're heading down more steeply. Whereas just a few years ago, we were at record amounts. So we're getting, this is all indicative of global weirding or climate weirding. This is one of the most scary plots because if you add the global sea ice area in the Arctic and Antarctic, we're, we're flatlining here. We're leveling off, we're flatlining, and this is amazingly, um, th this is unprecedented. This is what the ice looks like on maps. So in the, so the red line is the norm, the medium from 81 to 2010 in both of these cases. The, the, the red line, the um, yellow line, okay? So we're missing vast amounts of sea ice in the Arctic and in Antarctica. And there's even big gaps in Antarctica here, which is, which is also very surprising, very unusual. This is the Arctic monthly, the month, average monthly Arctic sea ice extent for October. And you can see how we've fallen off a cliff here. There's many ways to look at this data. This is another view of October, comparing Octobers from 79 to 2016. And we've dropped off a cliff here. Or we can talk about the Arctic sea ice, ice death spiral. So what we're seeing is years here along the radial axes to 2016, and each curve are, is the different months of the year with September being the black one, and then, and then the, the, the months October and August bracketing it. And we're seeing when this heads to zero, so I would expect this to head to zero, the black line by say 2020, and then the other two lines to head to zero on either side by about 2022, and then these next two lines by about 2024, and then all of the lines heading to zero by, 20, um, by 2030, and then We'll basically have no sea ice in the Arctic year round. We'll be in a much warmer climate. Who knows, global average temperatures could be five degrees, six degrees warmer than what they are now. And we'll be in a t 